We ask Wiggy about music. We ask Wiggy about clothes. We ask Wiggy about movies. All the things that he knows. And we'll ask him about baseball and basketball courts. We ask Wiggy 10 questions, but not all about sports. All right, we do this every week with Wiggy. 10 questions on different subjects. And try not to have any fun here. No laughs allowed. Uh, we got to stay on time. There are only 12 minutes to do the Well, that topic. kills my buzzer options then. <laughs> only 12 minutes to do it, so we got to stay on time. What are our buzzer options, Jimmy? Let's just go to the magic eight ball and see what the magic eight ball says. Shake it up. Of course. What else? Over the stuff with Gretchen Bunchen. <laughs> Falcon and Maserati are the two words, like I'm telling you, you guys suck. <laughs> so good. Out of boy, Cincinnati. They never let you down. I like that. I'm not disputing those comments, Jonathan, if you're listening. <laughs> know that I'm not disputing your comments. <laughs> I don't care what CB say, says. Anybody has to say. They don't know what's happening, so I really don't give a what they say. That's John Tortor. <laughs> Sorry about that. I... Spoke over a media guy in the background going, all right, when John Tortorella swore at CBC. He's already making friends up in Canada. Is that it? I think we got out Fenway tonight. <laughs> Olenek at seven feet, he comes in with more skills than the whiskey. Oh, yeah. yeah. We had that last night. And who can forget fantasy stats? I love fantasy stats. <laughs> and the older I get, I don't know. It's going to be some old fuddy-duddy. <laughs> I want the blowhole. <laughs> Okay, that's the one. Number uh, 10. I want the blowhole. <laughs> number 10, Wiggy. Give me your Wiggy power rankings in the NFL. Top five. One to five. All right. Number one, I'm going with Denver. Uh, number two, I am going with Seattle. Number three, New Orleans. Number four, New England. And number five, I had a toss-up between San Francisco and Kansas City. And you went with? I went with San Francisco. Denver, New Orleans, Seattle, Indy, New England. So we've uh, so I have New England at number five as well. We all consider them a top five team. I think they are. Good job on Indy, Maz. I think they deserve consideration in that top five. Mine are New Orleans. That's one. Denver's two. I'm still going to put San Francisco and Green Bay in there because I just think at the end of the day, those teams are going to be there. And the Pats are number five. I want the blowhole. <laughs> number nine, the Pats ran the ball only 18 times in Cincinnati on the day, Jermaine Wiggins, just six in the second half. Now, we talked about the goal line situation a little bit earlier, but in general, does Josh McDaniel deserve blame for going away from the run game in general? I, I think he does a little bit, but he's down to his third and fourth running back. So I, I think when you look at how he's calling the game, sometimes he's looking at it, well, maybe it's probably better if we put the ball in the hands of number 12 rather than put the ball in the hands of, say, Blunt and Bolden. Well, obviously, but is that the right call there? I, it's, I, I wouldn't say it's the right call, but I think at times when you get in a situation and you've, you're down to your third and fourth running back, you, sometimes you say, you know what? I got to go with this call because they're not there. Those guys don't run the same way as Vereen and Ridley would run the football. So sometimes that turns you away from running the football. <laughs> Wiggy, oh. Wiggy, a little reluctant there to second guess the Patriots. Yeah, I just said I didn't. I didn't agree with it. Yeah, let me help you out. Of course he deserves blame. <laughs> the only way he doesn't deserve blame is if you blame it Belichick instead. <laughs> <laughs> I want the blowhole. <laughs> Number eight, Esquire Magazine has named Scarlett Johansson as the sexiest woman alive seven years after she first won the award as a 21-year-old newcomer. She's 28. Wiggy, who wins the wiggiest, excuse me, the wiggiest, the wiggy sexiest woman alive award? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Alicia Keys, man. I like Alicia Keys. I've Alicia. heard that before still. Yeah, Alicia Keys. Look at, just look at her. She's got it all. She's, she's pretty. She's sexy. She's chocolate and thick. I, I just I fought long and hard trying to find somebody. Um, and, yeah, Rihanna kind of was, you know, she was kind of up there a little bit. But Alicia Keys, I think she's just, she's the total package. See, now you think you know what I'm going to say Of course. Here. Yes, the princess. But you're wrong. Because the question is sexiest woman alive. I'm going with Lucy Liu. Love her. I love me some Lucy Lou. <laughs> Seriously, she is a smoke. Still? Oh, love her. She, 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 I think she's more in the she's more in the cougar category. We're talking sex appeal now. We're yeah. not talking like, you Cou know, we're Cougar now. Yeah. Well, she's got great sex appeal. Off the charts. I don't know why I just I think of this, I, I the name that keeps popping into my head and I can't get it out is Nicole Zalumis. Does that make me wrong? No. 
Me Jeez like? Louise. Is that the one from NFL Network? Yeah. I want the blowhole. All right. Number seven. If uh, Tom Brady on his best day in his prime yep. was a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. Get it? With Brady at his best. Yep. In his prime. He was a 10. What is he now? I'd say he's about an 8, 8 and a half. Because I look at it last year, where would you put Tom Brady? If you would ask me the same question last year, you might have said, you know, 9. Wow. So you think he's fallen 20 to 15 percent? Uh, yeah, to, I'd say about to, an eight and a half. He okay. might even be a nine. Because so that, that, that feels like a yeah. strong, that feels like a precipitous yeah. drop. So you think he has dropped a point, to, uh, I'm sorry, two points to a point and a half in there. Okay, good answer. I got him at eight and a half. I do. I have him at eight and a half too. I have him at .75. I would give him, a, if he was a 10 at his best, he's a 9.25 right now. That's, that's is what I would yeah, say. You could, because you also have Don't to change look. your mind. This no, is no, your no, segment. No, no. I, I'm still saying. It was a very negative comment. Don't I back s- off I'm on it. I'm not backing off it. And I also, you look at some of the talent around him. You know, that out. Brings him down a little bit. Don't don't give me mitigating factors. I want the blow hole. <laughs> Brady's off 20% from his prime, says Jermaine Wiggins. Put it in the books. Uh, number six, on the heels of Peter Laviolette losing his job in Philadelphia after just three games. How about that? I want to check with Wiggy on Claude Julian. Now, in the past, Wiggy has been a very big Claude Julian critic, even bigger than me. In fact, uh, Wiggy has often wanted to fire Julian off the duck boats. I ask you, are those days over? Is he your coach, or are you still looking at the next guy? Uh, nah, I guess Claude has finally set in a little bit. You've been to two Stanley Cups in three years. Granted, I think you pulled the plug a little early on Sagan, but you were able to make up for it with adding one of my favorite players. That will come up on the question later on. <laughs> so, you know what? I got to give Claude credit. You know, the system does work. I Basically, I, it's, I'm like, hey, it's about the defense. It's not about scoring with Claude. They're over for now. It's over. <laughs> who, who's left out there who wants to fire Claude? Jimmy, do you know anybody? Is there anyone left? Not even I. I'm I'm, uh, I'm on board. That's yeah. telling you. Today. All right, I'll, I'll get back to you next week. I want the blowhole. <laughs> Number five, it's the wiki word on the street. He sends me a text page. Every Wednesday morning, tell me what's going on in his world. I can't understand it, so he has to translate. Here it is today. Could you understand it? Because what? Could you understand it? Because sometimes you said, sometimes you, I can understand that a little bit. Not one word. Okay. Here is the text. Ya boys, Bizak, (laughs) I'm about to break out the swizzle. One, number one, mo, M-O, time. Exclamation point, exclamation point, (laughs) exclamation point. (laughs) One mo time. (laughs) I see your mess. Ya boys, Bizak, I'm about to break out the swizzle one mo time. Yes. Please translate. Well, you know what? I get a lot of people saying, wait, you got any plays left in you? Um, And so... You know, I was up at Gillette today. I had an event working out a little bit. So I really believe I have some plays in me. So I do an, <laughs> I do an event at Castle Flag. I'll be there Sunday doing the event. And I'm going to wear my shoulder pads, my helmet, and my old Patriots jersey and see if I can get out there and run some good routes in the parking lot. <laughs> One more time. See if I can get it done. So what's the your boy's biz act? What does yeah, that mean? That means your boy's back. Your boy's Bizak. Yeah, I get it. I'm Bizak. And you're up, you're about to break out the swizzle one yes. more time. We'll break it out one more time. A little shifty, little and I'm I'm calling on all challenges. Cause I can't get anybody, <laughs> you know, maybe from New Orleans or Buffalo to come down and challenge. So anybody that, you know, think they played a little DB or linebacker in their days, see if I can shake them up. I love the image of Wizzy Wiggy being at the cask with his helmet and shoulder pads, <laughs> like looking like a dolpho. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't look that bad. Come on now. Jermaine, what's the shake last? Shake it up. What's the last day you spent in the league? The last day? Were you in camp with someone in yes. 09 or 08? Uh, or? Jacksonville. I would, uh, Jacksonville against Green Bay was my last NFL uh, preseason training camp. So it was a preseason game, Jacksonville, yeah. Green Bay. What year? Uh, oh, 2007. Oh, so it's been a, so yeah. you're, you're long gone. No yeah. chance. Okay. I, I think I got a couple plays. No, okay. I, I got a goal line play in me. Next. <laughs> I want the blow hole. <laughs> Okay, Jermaine, from all the bad Patriots plays Sunday in Cincy, what was your least favorite? And that's the play I got left in me. The, I don't know why you throw it to Nate Solder on the goal line. Josh McDaniels, I'm putting that one on him. You do not throw it to an offensive lineman running the back line, back corner route. I could have did a better job than that. You see, he got tied up. He's struggling. I would I, I would much rather him even throw it to the kid Mulligan or even who, man, because they're used to running those routes. You see he kind of gets held up. He's he's running with a piano on his back. He leans up. I just did. I did not agree with that play right there. One of the stupidest plays I've ever seen the Patriots call. Not their worst play from Sunday. In fact, not even close. What was their worst play? 
Third and 15 for Cincinnati from their own two-yard line at the end of the third quarter. They quick snapped the Patriots, and they weren't ready. Think of this for a second. Marvin Lewis outsmarted Bill Belichick. Basically, that's what that came down to, since he was more prepared and ready for a play than you were. Yeah, but you also outsmarted yourself on the goal line. Think of that. Oh, look, the goal line play was bad. Goal line play was bad. I can't believe Cincinnati put one past you. That is inexcusable. I want the blow hole. (laughs) Number three, Jermaine, what is your favorite TV show to watch with your wife? You, again, you've got to pick yes, a program I, you I only do. watch with her or that she makes you watch, etc. Yeah. Maz, I'm interested in your thoughts as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, me and her, our favorite show is with, with my boy, Scrap, Fizz Naeem, loving hip-hop, Atlanta, you know, Mama D. We love Stevie, Stevie J, Jocelyn. That's our favorite show to watch together. And I got you hooked on it. So yeah, is I, that you're on the wood? You in the wood, is that your favorite no, show? No, I've watched that solo. That, and, and Watch you know, it with the wood. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. Maz? I got to go Homeland. I'm into Homeland. I love Homeland. Yeah, but what's your but wifey you the, But said. you and the wifey. Yeah, together. She watches it too. And, and if you want to get something a little bit more on the softer side, a little more feminine, parenthood. That's, you know, you get a mutual interest there, right? We're both parents. <laughs> Maz, how many shows do you watch with your wife? I'd say it's really about three, maybe four. Parenthood, Homeland, uh, CSI, and I'm leaving one out. You still watch Boardwalk C- Empire. Law and Order. You still watch CSI? I do well. watch CSI. Yep. I watch CSI. a lot of shows with my wife. Beetle? I watch two together. One of them is Homeland. The other one is Modern Family. Oh, Modern Family we watch two. Oh, That's yeah. fine. Oh, my God. We, you watch a lot of TV. We watch Those Love and Hip Hop, Basketball Wives, Real Wives of House in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Every reality show you could possibly think about. That's what uh, that we watch. We're way behind at the moment. Jace, too? What about you, Felgi? None. Zero. I told you. What There's you and, no TV watching what, what, together. What you and the wood need to watch is Love and Hip Hop. New York's coming up, so you guys <laughs> okay. can watch that one. All right. I want the blowhole. <laughs> uh, number two, who's been your favorite player on the Bruins so far through two games? Uh, he wears number 12. <laughs> so, what has My he boy, done? Iggy. What has he done other than fight? Uh, that's, uh, hey, that's all I wanted him to do for right now. He'll get his time. He'll get his time, but I got to go with a Ginla. You know, it is what it is. I like I like his style of hockey. Put it like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, it and thick. If we're just talking two games thus far, Karan. I love what I've seen from Karan so far. Tory Krug. Yeah, I like him too. He's though. looked. I just love watching him play. Uh, Tory Krug is the guy. I want the blowhole. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask you for a prediction because I know what you're probably gonna say. Give me New a- Orleans. You like New Orleans? I do like New Orleans. Okay. Wow. Why yes. do you like New Orleans? And give me a key matchup in this game. I like New Orleans. I just think offensively, New Orleans is tough, and a key matchup is the linebackers against all the safeties against Jimmy Graham. They struggled with Gonzalez. They struggled with uh, Jermaine Gresham and the kid Efert. And now you got Jimmy Graham coming in, who's arguably the best tight end in the league right now. And if Gronkowski comes back, I like the addition of Gronk, but I think he's going to be on uh, snap count. And so I like New Orleans in this game by maybe seven. Wow. Yeah. The Jimmy Graham matchup is on my list. Behind Sproles scares oh. the crap out of me in this game. Who covers Darren Sproles? They can't cover backs and tight ends. This team's got both. They're screwed. And and <laughs> j- j- Jimmy Graham has already went four weeks in a row with a hundred yards receiving. So tough game. I think New Orleans is totally legit.